All right, let's get into it. Marty, you want to do the intros? All right, so uh, BSL, this is Biggie at the top of the Protoss. So he was the runner, right? So he did spawn as yeah. the Protoss at the 12 o'clock. And his ally, right, is going to be uh, in cross positions, uh, the Zerg, Andy. Yep. Now, this map is a little bit of Python. So his opponent here, uh, Izu, the other Zerg on the enemy team, is going to be right next to him. Uh, right. They're going to spot each other now. It's kind of a Python dynamic. And of course, uh, Wave, the Protoss. So cross position with your teammates, Zerg, Protoss, Mirror, basically. Yep, yep. Now, if there's like a team that doesn't have a Zerg, uh, or, or like, say you have a Zerg, Protoss versus Terran Zerg or something. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of um, ambiguity where like, you have to decide which race is going to deal with the Mutalisks, right? Like, is Terran going to go Irradiator, or is Protoss going to go Corsair? So we've actually seen both to good effect in this tournament before. But when it's a ZP versus ZP, as a TV2 player, uh, what usually do you do you see for unit comps for the Protoss? Because Zerg is going to go Mutalisks normally, but what do you think the Protosses usually do? Yeah, and, yeah, uh, no, absolutely. Great question, Roddy. Um, you know, I think the Protosses uh, tend to play more similarly in that they're both likely going to go two gate. Um, so the matter, the, the question is with the Protosses, at least, I think it's um, how quickly they're going to they're gonna get their gas and whether or not they're going to get a third gateway with that two gate open. Um, uh, on the flip side, the Zergs, there's a lot more variability there. I think uh, with, on the Zerg side, what we typically see are overpool builds, um, often playing uh, one hatch into muta kind of situations, or an overpool build going into a two hatch ling mask kind of style. Right. Um, I was going to ask you about that, actually, because we saw Seeky skip Mutalisks or get them very late early with Bonneth. Right, I want to ask right. you, like, is that something you only do versus Zerg Terran, or is that actually viable versus Zerg Protoss, too? And, and yeah, what, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah, no, with Ziki and, and Bonneth, um, Ziki, I think uh, his Muta control is just so good. You would think he would go Muta, but yeah, I've noticed that too. In their ZP mirror matchups, um, Ziki tends to favor going quick and, 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 and staying on mass links. Uh, nice. So I, I think it really depends on the player, um, but it looks like here uh, both Zergs are electing to go for that layer style, which I'm not surprised um, given the, the sort of cross positioning that they're in. It is, it does tend to play into sort of like an isolated ZBZ right, yeah. Muta versus Muta um, style. Yeah, because I mean, if the Protoss is supposed to take care of the enemy... Uh, oh, nice mana pylon, by the way. I choose it not oh, to yeah, that's the nice. yep. uh, And it looks like he's gas, is there, if, if I'm seeing that correctly on the minimap. But yeah, I mean, if your allies... Okay, so they're both taking the gas. But if your allies far away from you and you're supposed to protect him in terms of anti-air with Corsairs, it's just quite a difficult to do if he's not close to you, you know? Whereas if you're close to your ally, you can control both bases quite easily. Right, and that's actually a gas made from Wave in oh, that's Ziggy's base. Okay, so he stole the gas, so going for that early tank advantage. Right. Now, that can be pretty sweet, because like, the only advantage you're gonna have now as the red team, as, uh, as Andy and Biggie, is gonna be more units, right? But if you plug the ramp, you may not be able to use the fact that you have more units. Right, exactly. That's exactly right. And also those four zealots that were um, at in Biggie's main are now inside are, are now just leaving the base. But that gas really prohibited his ability to get those zealots out onto the map. Whereas here, um, Wave is now teching up quicker, which tends to do well against the Muta opposition that um, uh, that Andy is going to have at the six o'clock position. So I kind of like the position that the blue team's in right now, just relative to Wave's quicker tech. Um, but you got to think, Biggie's got to get something done here. His tech is way slow, and with the Zergs both going Muta, you right. got to think these Zealots got to get something done here. Okay, so yeah, he's trying to use. They're trying to use their uh, unit advantage here, because just like in a Zerg versus Zerg, where if you have a later Spire, you can go Zerglings to delay the Mutalisks to force some to force Links. You can do the same in two v two, which is what you want to do. And they're actually going to catch a lot of these Links here. Horrible nice. position walking into this. All right, of course they're in the rush because they do want to. Uh, Delay the mutalisk as much as possible since they are behind the technology. And here we go. Only one sunken. This could be dangerous. Yeah, and kind of leading the charge here. Zila should be leading the charges. One drone. Going for the drones here. Picks off one drone here from Izu. Of the reinforcing Zelons, dude. Wade. Pretty good yep. move there. 
So they're gonna be able to. I mean, they did delay the mutas a bit because they they forced uh, the larva to be used. Like we didn't see three larva stack, right? Right, exactly. But nonetheless, exactly. Uh, I think that was probably pretty good by by Wave and his to come in there and clean up all those units, right? Yeah, excellent timing there from Wave to, to get there and help his ally. We gotta really see what's gonna develop here from Andy. Looks like mutas are on the way. Three mutas oh, yeah, out okay. now. So they had the, they had a the zealot advantage, but they didn't commit with the Zerg and, Zerg advantage too. So he was able to save Larva, coming here with three mutas against one, and maybe even kill his opponent. Agra. Yeah, it's kind of an awkward spot here for Izzy. He's gonna lose. Ooh, both Scourge land hit there for Andy. Really excellent micro here from Andy. Yeah, so that's a dead Zerg right there. I don't see how how, how uh, anything else can come to pass here. So it's gonna Ooh, be a two v one. Now there's only one Muta left though. And here yes, Wave launching a attack large here. counter attack. This is a big attack here from Wave. Some of Biggie's forces are actually heading towards Izu, leaving his forces at home a little bit light. Oh wow! Even the the Zealots. Nice. Oh, last well for down Biggie. from Andy. Okay, good pro grill. Uh, if you oh, can hold the round. He's gonna take some damage, but probably not as much as the Zerg did, right? Uh, right? I think he's gonna hold it. He's well, he, gonna be he's essentially... He's down the probes here, people. taking some economic damage. If he can get on top of this ramp, with the reinforcements coming from behind. Nice choke here, though, for Biggie. Yeah, that's that's gonna wow. be the end for Izzy right there. Andy just going in no mercy, finishing him off, so... Like, the only way to win like in a situation like this normally is if you, like, take up and you come up with, like, a Reaver or something. But I don't think we have that from Wave. No, Looks Wave like needs to kill him now. Oh. Wave needs to kill him now, and I think he can do it. If Wave does it, if he kills Biggie here, which yeah, looks he like can he can, you gotta think he can beat one hatch from Andy. That is insane, dude. He just kept pressing and actually made it up the ramp. Now, I wonder if maybe uh, the Mutalus could have been sent to assist, but it's too late for now. Too many of the wounds were allowed to uh, accumulate here. And surely the Protoss would beat the one base Zerg, as you said, in a 1v1. Wow. Biggie just took too much economic damage, sending all those probes to his ramp and then losing them. And Wave just constantly producing units and streaming them into Biggie's base is just so much overwhelming pressure. Biggie here looks like he's out, but he's got units left. He's got probes, okay. So he does have probes. I think in this spot, Andy needs to come help Biggie because Biggie does have probes. He didn't manage to squeak them out. Well, the Muta does keep joining in now. Oh, the that's one Muta. Muta. It's going to be taken out Muta? now. Rip. Oh, there they are. Okay, here come the Muta. So, finally going to clean this up with so many probes are lost. Like, I think the probes wow. you saw right there are like the only probes he has. That's it. Two probes. He can't even make another probe right now until those get back. Is he doing what he can with what he has? And he's literally got zero minerals. <laughs> You remember when Biggie uh, counterattacked with three zealots as his space got attacked? Like, I have right, to remember, right, if he right. had used those to defend himself, maybe oh, he could have survived, okay. right? Yep, absolutely. Those three zealots was absolutely Four gate critical, goons, by the way. So that's how he managed to make it his way up there. Um, oh, yeah. A lot of people think three gate goons is a max, but you can actually do like 3.8 or 3.7, which means four is actually a little bit better than three if you really just want to slam out a lot of goons. And that's what he went for. You know, I've never heard of that as a statistic, a 3.7, 3.8, but that sounds really, really accurate and precise. <laughs> when I play Protoss, I, I haven't done that, bit, but it's something about that, yeah. Four gate, it, it, it's kind of tough, um, but I guess it depends on the number of probes you have. In this spot right here, Wave's got more probes than, than both of the, the red oh, players here in terms of peons or workers, but yeah. Andy's got a decent number of mutas here. He can definitely pick off these two. Yeah, I mean, Four if Biggie in. can get back in the game, it's gonna be a 2v1, so... Honestly, at this point, I don't know if Sir can do it, but, like, if he could just barely hold on long enough for his allies to come back, they could win. Yeah, but giving up the ramp, the, the, yeah. above the ramp is really where Andy can trade the best there, but to give that spot up, which he had to because of the numbers... Yeah, um, and every Pogo goes down is huge here. One Pogo goes down. Massive. Yeah. I think Wave did it, man. I mean, there is a little bit of an issue, which is that if he ever goes to kill his neighbor, then a mutas come in to counter, and then it can come back to him. But there's just so many Ragoons here. You can actually so have Ragoons everywhere. <laughs> like, enough to defend and attack, so... Yeah. Oh, picking off some... Doing some damage in the middle. Picks off one Muta there for Wave. Really nice pick off there from, from Wave there. Uh, yeah, I think Andy's realizing that there's too much here in this follow-up. I need to go do something into Wave's base and try to win this one versus one. 
Andy's gonna like to pick off these free goons in the middle. Meanwhile, Wave getting into Biggie's base, finishing him off. These last four probes, three probes, two probes. Yeah, that's gonna have to be And Here comes the counter attack, but look at how many different goons are here, dude. There are just so many units everywhere. No matter where you go, the army is superior. Yeah, that's a lot of goons. Yeah, and they're being reinforced by the gateways. It's like, it's just too much. Damn, dude. Waves macro this game, and his timing with his units just looking really sharp. GG. Or, good no, job. No, good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's new watching. That's this is eating some popcorn and, uh, and enjoying the show. And there it is. GG. Wow. Damn, that was a back and forth. That was crazy, dude. Yeah, it looked real grim for them there, uh, especially with the Mutaverse Muta um, situation. And then Wave just uh, decides to take the opportunity and decisively uh, counters Biggie and uh, and kind of steamrolled into a victory. That was uh, really impressive from Wave. And um, you got to think, those three Zealots, if they just yeah. stayed home, <laughs> could have been a different outcome. So are we ready for the next game? Yes, sir. I think, uh, yeah, so the loser team is going to pick the map. We'll see what the Got game it. two map will be. As soon as Zero gives us the green light, we'll go ahead into match number two of this best of the five series. So as a team with a random user, um, you know, are certain maps going to be better for that? I'm thinking like the island map, maybe, if you're comfortable playing on Sparkle, would give you an advantage as a random, right? Um, yeah, I guess so. I never really had thought about that. Um, ZR on Sparkle. I mean, Sparkle's not very large, but there is that element of kind of surprise there. Um, but the OV can also get there too. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of in between. I, I understand sort of that mentality. To me, Sparkle's a ZP map. You know, that's, yeah. that's just how I view it. But, but yeah, I, I would think kind of middle, middle of the road for Andy and Biggie here. Just, uh, understanding that that win was really just costed by just one movement. Um, so I don't think they're, you know, mentally going to be out of it in this spot. I think, if anything, they're hungrier because they feel like they let that out of their, you know, slip from their hands. Um, so, no, I don't, I don't think it's going to be Sparkle. I think it might be something more middling, like a, like a Fighting Spirit or maybe even like a, maybe even like a Luna. Um, but we'll see. <clears throat> All right, let's, All right let's get into it. So this looks like Fighting Spirit indeed. Um, they wanted to keep it simple, you know. Um, now, what are the positions? Because that actually matters a lot. So it's Andy and Biggie. So cross positions again. Okay. Yeah. And it's Zerg Protoss versus Zerg and Protoss. Mirror match once again. Yep, yep. So we're going to have uh, Biggie here uh, in the bottom right position and his ally, uh, Andy. Um, and this here is going to be Wave allying his his ally is going to be Izu, the Zerg, in the top right. So the Zergs are both up top. Um, Izu's going to scout Biggie, and he's going to scout uh, Izu, and we'll see where Wave, uh, Wave will go scouting um, Andy. So <laughs> kind of interesting how the scouting pattern is kind of like a clockwise situation here. <laughs> yeah, I guess usually people try to scout the, um, the natural. Yep. Uh, so you can put your over there and get some value. Um, exactly. Gateway Probe Scout, so uh, coming out here from um, uh, Wave. And we haven't seen, uh, yeah, actually both products are scouting at the same time also. Is sub yeah. Gosu for 10 months. Yep, so we'll see. Are, are they going to both play later like they did last game? Obviously on this map, very much different like Paranoid Android or what we call Python. Uh, they're not going to be as close to each other, even though they're both in that upper part of the map positions. Um, so we'll see kind of what their opens are. I expect an overpool layer, just like last game from both Zergs here, but we'll see if there's any uh, adjustments that either Zergs will make. Um, but right now, Izu doesn't know what the race is. Oh, actually, the probe of Biggies is in Wave's base. Yeah, it's so. in Oh, and we have a layer first again. Yep, yep. Um, and I yeah, probably the same. Interesting. Interesting. Wave, oh, so Wave is that a forge right there in the base? Oh, we got a mana pot on, by the way. Uh, oh, but it's not blocked. No, is that an empty matter? Because it's not blocking anything. No. Is it? No. It's not. Uh, 
So that's a little bit of a fade map item, I gotta say. That doesn't actually do much. Yeah, I gotta question this one. So that's unfortunate, but um, anyway, two gates so far for both players. Now, of course, you can go to two gate forge and cannon up your right on your own ramp and tank, or yeah. you could go two gate gas uh, and go into dragoons. Those are the two most common um, paths here. Uh, one base layer, I mean, one hatch layer for both Zergs so far. Yeah, Izu is going to manage to try to get two Zealots into Biggie's base. Biggie looks like he's going to seal off his, his um, wall in. Uh, but this Zealot from Biggie is going to get up to Izu, and Annie's Lings are going to um, chauffeur him. They're going to uh, see the pylon. Doing a really good job. They see the pylon. So when you see this, you're essentially expecting like the opposing team to take up first. Or it could theoretically just be to help the Zerg. So the Zerg can stack up three larva and then explode right. into mutilisks. But a lot of the times, oh, he's making the forge here, interesting. Uh, a lot of the times, Protoss will actually tech fast while cannoning up and then come out with like a fast Reaver or, or Temper or something. But we don't actually see that yet. Yeah, this cannon looks like it will pay off. Um, well, the cannon's not yet being morphed. That's a forge. Okay, so uh, Biggie actually going to send his Zealots out. Wave coming in for a counter uh, could be a little dangerous here. For oh, this time he it. Yeah. We don't have a cannon yet, so I think oh. he might actually die here. He's got a hold of the ramp, but uh, and yeah, he's gonna have to drone right here. Yep. Yeah, this is all in. He needs to hold the ramp. No sunken at home. But yeah, he's gonna lose one drone. Now, Wave uh, is hitting Biggie right now. But Izu needs to hold the Damn, that cannon is so far away from finishing. So many oh. drones are gonna die for this, so we really need the counter attack from Wave at the bottom. To do so much damage to pay for this to make up right. Meanwhile, Andy, no resistance. He's just going straight into Muta. Really nice counter here from Wave. Yeah, he took out the pile, so no more units right there. Oh, uh, no. That means this Protoss is eventually gonna die. Um, Biggie is oh, gonna die. Oh man, did they make another blunder? That same blunder? Committing, yeah. Is who has enough money for Scourge for days. Uh. Right, yeah, so we can oh, man. possibly, I mean, the only way to kill Yuzu right now with a mute advantage is like the most godlike Chinese triangle micro you've yep. ever seen. Like, remember that Pimpus play with the one mute? Like, that's the level we need right now. That's the only way this could work. Now, this shield battery is, is definitely proving its worth here. If he can pick off that core, that's going to help uh, Izu, at least in terms of his air. Okay, gets the core, oh, that's good. He's not even going to die, so the cattle pack isn't even really working. Focus of the Zerg reinforcements. Okay, so you're gonna go to camp now. the eggs. This could be good, actually. Um, not, maybe not good enough, but it's definitely good. Yeah, because Andy went for speed, maybe that's why the Scourge timing here is so fast. In any case, if you can get any muted, that'd be amazing. Oh, oh my goodness. How? Does he have the insane Chinese triangle? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> the triangle not. micro. Yeah, I mean, you can actually counter micro that, so even if you have it down, like, it's not a can guarantee. Can you really? With one yeah, because you, you can manually move Scourge so that it doesn't bug out, you know what I mean? Like, um, just move, wow. take it along. Oh, the Dragoons, though. Will I get it? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I got it. Nice pick off. Alright, well, more Scourge being produced here from Mizu. Not surprisingly. He's doing drone scourge, basically, trying to get back in the game. And one connects, actually. Very big deal right there. Yeah. Yeah, really nice. A two oh, mutas coming in right now. Muta. How? Okay, so the scourge is, is zoning out the Alamutas while he goes for the main base. If you could get a drone here, that'd be amazing. But the rogue goons are going to put us off. Oh, two zealots, man. too, though. So they want to equal up the, the, the eco damage rate. Right? One drone already went down. Two even. Right. Now, with the cannon, they feel like they can trade like this, and I totally understand right. that mindset. This is going to give Wave time, too, to get his goon count up. This might be worth it. I don't know. I, I have to imagine that was worth it, because now the equalized... I mean, he's even ahead in the economy right now. He's about yeah, right. Round. And he was not ahead in the economy before, I can tell you that. Yeah. But it being, it took it. So, we just have um, Dragoon range on the way, no real tech for Wave and... Okay, three gate goons. So basically, it's Dragoon spam for both players, but it's Dragoon spam where one Protoss has cannons at the ramp, right? Which gives them a lot more freedom to maneuver in the middle of the map without dying to counter attacks. Yeah, and the other pro and one Protoss has eight more probes than the other. You know that's going to play a role as this game continues each second. Um, Can you survive this? One draw's going to down minimum. Two. Oh 
nice pick off there from Andy. And with Mindro, he could even win this fight, although he's getting the moving shot, so he's oh. gonna have to do something. One shot goes down. Wow, this is so intense. Really good micro from Izu. Damages yeah. everything. That was some good manual scourge micro, where he was like constantly spam right, picking it right. uh, yep. to make sure it landed. Andy feeling a lot more confident with four. He's gonna be more confident with five. This is really tight. Really, really tight. Izu's on four drones. Decided yeah. to. So yeah, moving up now is Wave with Dragoons. And of course, he's not really gonna die to a cannon clap because he has so many cannons there. But he might get 2v1 here, so they probably wanna link up their units here. And looks like they're gonna yeah. go for a 2v1. And of course, they don't see this coming, the enemy. So right. uh, if you're like responding by the time your base is already dying. Uh, obviously, even if you clean it up, you're going to take a lot of damage. Right. This is one of those situations where you you got to give an edge to the team that strikes first. Exactly. Here comes Wave. So he's going to go for the counter pack, but the, mute, the, the cannons are going to absorb oh, easily. Oh, he's got the defense. Which means oh, uh, Andy is dead up here. He can't help. Right. Now, if he could manage to get a drone out. Okay, he's definitely gonna get a drone out. He's got money for an extractor, or he doesn't have money for an extractor. Here, wave, all in here. He needs to hold. Oh, wow, he's Alan, really just coming in the right here. That the pro great. He's gonna be able to hold the map. That was so wow. good, yeah. To be able to from Izzy, reading the game, reading the situation. Now, Biggie has been making probes. He is up to 17 now. The only really vulnerable point is to attack Izzy at the top right right now. But if you do. You're gonna get counterattacked and die to to waves for games, right? Because he doesn't have his own cannons, uh, Biggie, right? Right. There's no winning move here. You gotta think. Now Andy doesn't have Muta's left, so he's much less of a threat here. Oh, he's even sunk and calling very nice oh, to the map because he knows it is the only weakness right now. Right. Now he doesn't have enough to hold one v two, but this is gonna give a lot of freedom to Wayne. To, uh, I mean, he could counterattack, or he could even expand because this is gonna actually gonna like absorb a lot of. Uh, it's gonna give him a lot of time, but he, like he could catch these units and then use the army advantage to expand if he wants to. There's a lot he could do. He could try to sneak in a DT. Uh, he could try to go for Weaver because he knows there's not gonna be any any enemy mutalisks to deal with. So right. Raboon Weaver could actually be good right now. Yeah, it looks like Wave's gonna have enough here. Wave should be able to survive this. Yeah, and at this point, if he can just camp the ramp of his island with his own dragoons, and then camp his own ramp with, um, you know, cannons, obviously, then they can just play it up 2v1 and win eventually. Nice clean up there from the blue team. Yeah, this is a tough spot for Biggie. He's gonna have to work a miracle. And he's getting, getting into Templars. So that's a way to get an expansion, essentially, because you know your opponent doesn't have an observer yet. GG, that's it. GG. I'm glad wow. we got to see the cannons in the round because I always talk about how good those are, but a lot of times people haven't been going for them so far. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's. I mean, you pointed it out. You know, when you, when you see that pylon, what do you do? And and I think, you know, kind of to your point, it boils down to two options. You either try to push it before the cannons go up, or you play into more of a quicker tech and play defensively. I mean, if they're wasting money on cannons, it certainly doesn't make sense to overproduce units if you if you don't think it makes sense to, to push up that there. But uh, but yeah, another weird kind of situation where in the be sort of early parts of the game, because Izu was being pushed so hard and losing drones left and right, uh, kind of like game one, I felt like Andy and Biggie had sort of a great position early on, but minus a few, you know, um, actions, I, uh, you know, Izu and Wave get back into it and then somehow just come out ahead. Uh, just really interesting how, how close these teams are. <clears throat> yeah, that was a very close game. So, of course, um, the losing team is going to be able to pick a map. And I'm interested to see what they pick, um, actually. Are they going to pick a standard map, or are they going to be, you know, those guys picking Sparkle, you know? Uh, I don't know. I know Andy. Andy's a, a, a close friend of mine. I know he doesn't like Sparkle, so... <laughs> okay, spoiler. All right. Yeah. I'd be surprised if it was Sparkle, let's put it that way. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's hard to say, uh, honestly. Um, again, sort of middling of the road. I, mentally, I think if, if I'm Andy and Biggie, it's like, you know, like, I feel like... 
luck isn't on my side right now. Like we're not really playing bad. It's like minus a few things. So I wouldn't feel too discouraged if I'm them. But you know, when you're when you're down zero two in a best of five series, obviously all chips in the table here in game three. I'm not gonna try to take risks. Just try to beat them. Uh, so middling of the road, maybe maybe a Luna, um, you know, Paradiso kind of thing. We'll see. All right, let's get into it. Game number three here in the best of five. Right, and Luna was the map chosen, so we got way by the top left, as the Protoss, of course. And uh, this ally cross spawned again is Izu, the Brown Zerg. Versus um, Biggie up here as the blue Protoss. And his ally, the Red Zerg. So another Protoss Zerg mirror. Now I have to question was he truly random or is he picking right. Protoss? <laughs> That's <laughs> right? exactly what I was thinking as well. I'm starting to think he went ahead and chose Protoss, um, but we can find that out momentarily. Uh, but yeah, I think Biggie's best race is Protoss. It would make sense for him at this stage of the tournament because there are no limitations to your ability to change your race. Um, even though you're designated as a random, doesn't mean you have to do it. Uh, I think he chose to go P here in this series, um, which is not right. a surprise. I, I think it's nine the about strongest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah so nine Protoss, of course, is a very uh, standard team that everybody knows is viable, you know? Yep. Uh, and nothing weird about the, that configuration. So um, Mirror the Nine Pool gas build so far. It seems like. Now, is that like a reaction to being cross spawn, or is that just uh, that they happen to go for that right here? Yeah, good question. I think this is more of a reaction to the map, right? So this map, Luna, this is like the newest version. This is the Neo Luna final version. I like this version because um, Link Truth walls are available for Terran players. Right. Yeah. Uh, but this ramp um, is big. It's a big ramp. Um, it's a small map, so I think it fit. It, it oh, favored. yeah, the ramp, right. Yeah, the ramp is big. It's a large ramp. Um, it favors kind of melee, melee kind of style, wings, mass kind of style openings. Um, so I, I would expect both Zerg players here to actually go into two hash Ling play versus later play. And then this will be a very um, micro intensive sort of uh, determinant uh, to determine um, who comes out ahead. I think it's going to be very micro intensive. <clears throat> yeah, and tactics too, like go to the right pace at the right time, you know, counter right, attacking, right. defending, 2v1, stuff like that. So we have yeah. mirrored build so far, so it's really going to be pure tactics at this point of decision making. Uh, because neither players really diverge. It's two gate ankle speed for both players. And uh, yeah, yeah. Both both Protosses are sending their first Zealot out. It looks like Wave is actually sending his Zealot towards Biggie, whereas Biggie is sending his towards uh, Izu. Uh, so kind of a, again clockwise kind of positioning because Andy's also heading towards uh, Wave and Izu is the only one that's sort of positioning outside of his ramp, but now going towards uh, what seems to be Andy. And so we didn't have enough units, so the speed is getting in. This is potentially game winning. Oh. Immediately, Izu counterattacks because he knows nice it's too late to defend. Right. But uh, actually, Andy has been pooling links, so he should be able to absorb the counterattack, and that leaves us with soon to be four speed links and a pro dot me. That's a big ox. Yeah, Andy's gonna have to divert his attention towards his main and uh, wave um, with these handful of links. A lot of APM here being expended. Meanwhile, Biggie is just sitting in his base. Looks like he's pecking up even sooner. So Wave's gonna have to do a good job defending this, and Andy here. Uh, doesn't have a sunken, so he needs to be careful. Andy. Yeah, he's going to be two v one because we see yeah. Protoss Zealots coming down here as well. Right. Uh, but then he's going to get counterattacked by uh, Biggie, so we got counterattacks all over the place. Uh, kind of hard to call how this is going to go, but uh... it's kind of crazy. But yeah, Andy is definitely in trouble. I mean, he's he's losing drones alone. Oh, he's going to have a sunken though. If he can get that up, you can actually carry games by absorbing attacks when it's like this. Okay, those two links should help in this spot. Okay, wow. Picked off the drones. Leaves Andy with three drones there. Meanwhile, Biggie trying to infiltrate into Izzy's base, but I think Izzy has it sunk in. Yeah, he okay. Also has sunk in. But he did get a drone. That's a drone for isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, in one run, maybe? No, okay, but. Um, okay, another counter attack. I mean. More results coming in. Uh, another counterattack up here. Uh, so if you can hold the ramp, get a two versus two, and then maybe a probe drill. Uh, I 
doesn't look like it, so he's gonna break through here. Wave Zealots are gonna come in here. Just go to town once pro blind. Or we could go for the pylon. The oh, if he gets that pylon, that's gonna be the game. That's gonna be the game changing moment right there. Oh, it's gonna be close. These Zealots need to pop out. There they go. Okay, two Zealots come out at least. So maybe with speed and reinforcements, if they could arrive here before more Zealots come in, maybe they can make this work. Now Andy is coming to support, but you gotta think. That's double the Zealot count. Yeah, and he's still another pylon, dude. Those gateways are on the power. So, oh, man. the longer this goes, the more, you know, way you just gotta get units back and shuffle for Biggie. Right. Because Biggie can't take units. Right. Yeah, oh, so man. this might be it. The two yeah, Biggie's gotta be kicking himself for going such quick tech against the 9-pole opens. Yeah. Oh, and Andy calls it GG. Wow. Do you think maybe he should have, um, 